Next up in the Ambassadors Showcase is for networking ambassador Sheena Wyatt. Um, Sheena's based up in Lincolnshire, was regional leader for, for Lincolnshire as well, the Shire, um, as it's known. And I first met Sheena, I think about 10 years ago, um, when she was based up in North Yorkshire had recently joined for networking and at the time had breast cancer and was being treated for it as well. She she came along to, to one of my networking seminars. So um, I'm going to hand over. Here's Sheena's story. Hey folks, I'm once again with a for networking ambassador and and I'm really looking forward to this one because I'm with foreign ambassador Sheena Wyatt. Um, Sheena Wyatt of Lightning Training and Kapow. And Sheena and I have known each other for a little while now um, in Sheena, she, Sheena's, in Sheena's previous life in, in full networking, in my previous life in 4N, and as mates. Um, so I'm going to start, as, as I've started with the um, other ambassadors, tell me about your full networking experience. How, how long have you been involved? What's your, your, your life been like in 4N? Well, it's, you know, this is a fortuitously timed uh, chat, Steph, because would you believe it, this year is my 10th year in for networking. Um, I actually joined in March, so my anniversary was just before we went into lockdown, but, uh, you know, I have been in for networking since, uh, you know, for the whole of that 10 years. I've been on a team for the whole of that time um, and worked my way up if you like, from the old operations assistant job, remember those days, uh, you know, up to regional leader, which is what the position I held for the last four and a half years just before we went into lockdown. And when, when you joined, you were primarily lightning training. Yes. Now, now you're primarily Kapow. I am. So, so just tell us a little bit about that. What was the, the sort of evolution of, of those things? You know, it, it really is interesting because somebody else asked me that the other day in a one to one and, and, you know, trying to kind of nutshell it. I thought, golly, 4N really does have a lot to answer for, um, because, you know, when I when I joined for networking, I'd got a brand new business on the back end of a particularly dramatic business incident that I know you know about and um, you know I needed to make contacts and get clients really quickly because I didn't have any and that's why I joined 4N and to begin with the I, re I remember it so vividly the bit in the script where they said and you get three what 10 minute one-to-one -one, face to face appointments at every meeting and I was getting quoted 150 quid a time for face to face lead generation in York that was the hook that brought me in and for the first sort of three, four years of my 4M membership, I very much looked at trying to get people interested in the training consultancy, either recruiting them as freelance trainers, which worked well, or trying to get them to, to book me to deliver training, which did not go quite so well. Um, and then the rest of it was your fault, actually, because you know we were having a chat. It may have been a one-to-one. -one. It, it may have been over a damn fine bottle of something I, I can't remember so probably the latter and uh, and I was having a good old whinge at you that nobody was buying my stuff and you asked me one very very clear question which is what do people ask you about when they have a one-to-one -one with you and it was like having a light bulb switched on in my head because I thought Sheena you are being such a muppet they are not asking you about Excel data analysis, time management, you know, public speaking skills, they're asking you how you, you do what you do, how I do this, how I basically do being Sheena Wyatt. And you just looked me squarely in the eye and said, so why aren't you doing that then? Yeah. <laughs> and from there, Kapow was born. And, uh, you know, Kapow, personal branding, business coaching has been a major part of my life now for the last four years. And about 18 months ago, I moved out of lightning training and I'm fully yeah. kapowing from here on in. And so little ad break then, tell us a little bit about what Kapow actually does for, for, for its clients. What 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 happens if you're a if you're a Kapow client? Well in a nutshell, what I do is nag people for a living. I um I take <laughs> business owners and I turn them into business superheroes. And the way I do that is by getting them to focus on what they do best, bringing that into their business, but most particularly keeping them focused giving them the drive, the kick up the butt, really, to keep going down the road they want to go, but also just helping steer them along the way. Right now in lockdown, business coaching has become quite a hybrid between working on people's ideas to move their business forward. There's had to be a lot of helping people work out how to adapt to survive whilst planning to thrive at the end of whatever this is and wherever it goes. Um, there's been a bit of therapy involved in, in lockdown as people have 
trying to adjust to the things they thought were secure and now aren't. Um, and there's also been quite a lot of helping people change direction. So I suppose Kapow is really about not just going, you need to do this for your business, but also does this work for your brand, your business and your personal brand aligned because they need to be and just keep going keep going through the steps keep motivating people through the steps one of the best bits of feedback i had after our first coaching call just earlier this week was that was brilliant i feel really motivated and energized for the first time in a couple of months and i feel like i know what i need to do that's awesome so so for the average four networking member business owner then what what typical challenges do, do they come across do you find what's what's sort of normal what what comes up more often than not They've got great ideas, but they don't know how to implement them. And, you know, they, they've got that. I call, you can see it sort of over that shoulder. You know, my wall of brain is where all the mad stuff that I want to do with Kapow, all the global domination and wahaha stuff, um, that all goes on there because that's too difficult to fit in each day. And quite often people come to me with the big wall of brain ideas, the mad global domination. And I go, brilliant, that's fantastic. But you know what? You've got to go way down to the bottom of that tree before we get to the top. And you've got to start focusing on building that journey. I use the J word, building that journey by focusing on where your low hanging fruits are, where are your easy hits, where are your easy wins. So I take that wall of brain idea. I give them permission to go, wow, it's fantastic. And then I go, yes, it is. Now let's start. Let's start going up that road until we get to that big, old, scary top of the tree wall of brain moment. I love it. <laughs> and, and do you find, I mean, people have the ideas. Is it... Is it, is it their fault? Is it because they've come out of corporate environment? Why do you think people don't don't work out how to implement their ideas, how to put the I tactics in place? I, I think that more often than not, A, it's a bit holy ass butts moment. You know, I've got this great big scary idea. This is awesome, great big scary idea. And the key word there is scary. Sometimes it's also lack of confidence, not giving themselves permission to have the ambition. That, that's quite interesting. You know, you, you've chosen, most people that I work with have chosen to be self-employed, but there's still that element of, I don't think I should be, I don't think I'm allowed to do this. People are going to think I'm a bit too big for my boots. And, you know, what are people going to think? Because there are other people doing that. I mean, hell far, if I'd thought that about business coaching, I'd have never got to this point. There's thousands of business coaches out there, but everybody does something a little bit different. And so I think there's an element of, I don't know how to get from where I am to the big scary idea. And I need someone to give me permission that I can own that ambition and, and go for it. So it's not, it's not quite confidence then, is it? Cause I come across, I come across quite a lot of very confident people who, who do get stuck exactly as you say, they don't, they don't quite know how to take the next step. So I don't think that's that's confidence all the way through, is it? No, it isn't. Because, you know, some of the clients I have, and obviously we'll name no names, are very active networkers. They're very active in 4N. They're very visible in 4N. And you would never think that those people had confidence issues. But it's almost like we all have this sort of invisible elastic band that's, you know, every now and again you, you push the limit of the of the elastic band and instead of going that next step to snap it when it when it resists you think oh it's easier to go back that way i'll just go back that way and uh, you know so what i do i suppose is just help people get empower you know their thought process and basically put their pants on over their trousers yeah well i've heard you use use that expression before that i think all of this is interesting to me because you can I see people talking about helping to build people's confidence, but I don't think that always fills in all of the holes. I don't think that always gives people everything that, 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 that they need mm -hmm. to have, the, the tool, sit, tool, tool kit that they need to have. And, and thinking about for networking, you choose to be on the for networking team and have made that choice since you, you were an operations assistant. What, what keeps you coming back? And I, I asked the same question to Brad yesterday, the founder of for networking. What keeps you coming back and wanting to, to be part of the team? How long have we got? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think one of the things that I enjoy more than anything else in the new online world is 
continuing to work with the team. I loved being a regional leader. That was my favorite job of you know, all the roles that I did in 4N. And one of the reasons I loved that so much was being able to build up you know, a great team of people working with me in the Shire to bring the Shire into the networking community. You know, huge county, very rural, you know, very low population. Our challenges were quite different. And you know, going into the online world where we basically nobody had a clue what was going on, you know, some of that team went, yeah, I'm up for it. And the relationships that you build with that, the 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 platform of trust and friendship from the people that you work with is really valuable. Being self-employed can be really lonely. And, you know, being part of, you know, of a team, being part of foreign and being also able to, you know, to drive how you want to, to network in, in the groups that I look after. You know, I have become the niche networking queen. All my groups are niche and I'm about to launch a new networking group, the like of which foreign have never seen at the end of this month. Tune in uh, 31st of July for Get Your Nosh On, live from my okay. kitchen. Oh, yeah. And that's one of the things I love about being on the team, you know, is not only being able to build friendships and to, you know, build that platform of trust and build that platform of, I suppose, having each other's back, support, you know, community, etc. on a local level with my groups, but being part of something much bigger, about, you know, being part of the ambassador group, being part of your team. I love that stuff. We would never have met, like literally, had it not been for for networking, because we... I would have continued to, to network locally here in Oxfordshire, you up in Lincolnshire. I, I was going to ask the question about how lockdown has changed your experience, but I think when I, I know you, so I know you you you, you love your home. Um, you, you love your home, Wyatt Towers, and, and, and this lockdown has given you the opportunity to continue networking. Yeah. And, and yet, spend more time in in the home and the kitchen and the garden that, that I know you love so much absolutely it's just it's been an absolute revelation it re it really has much as I loved being regional leader for the shire all those different bits of shires for those watching who were going and you know that was nottinghamshire and that was my, yeah i know uh but you know it, all the bits that became the shire i loved that but i spent half my life in the car and yeah. you know being able to get into the online networking i've been able to foresight at places i would never have had the opportunity to foresight face to face without having to donate an organ to afford to pay for it and that's been fantastic i've just been talking with mark northall this morning about networking at one of his groups next week i'm networking twice in scotland in august never have had that opportunity and what it's done for my business what it's done for kapow has been astonishing absolutely astonishing Oh, go on then. That's, you, okay. you can't just leave us hanging there. What has it done? Well, what I found is so interesting, you know, right at the beginning of lockdown, I remember, I remember having a chat with Ollie in the conservatory over a glass of wine saying, right, I'm prepared to lose some clients and I'm prepared for the next few months to be really quite difficult. Um, because that, you know, I thought if I verbalise that, I can own it. And then when it happens, it won't be quite so, you know, holy ass, but scary. Um, completely the reverse. I haven't lost a single client, which I think is fantastic. Uh, I've gained more new clients since we went into lockdown and I started networking online than I did in the whole of the first part of the year prior to lockdown. And you know what's really interesting is they have come from outside the Shire. Because I have been able to online network in regions I would never have gone to in the face-to-face -face world, it's a whole brand new audience looking for the kind of support and direction that they feel I can give them. And a semi, you know, another game changer in that front was, you know, I offering 15 minute free taster sessions online because I used to do that face to face in the 10 minute one to ones, you know, come and have a chat. Let's have a chat about how Kapow could work for you. But you know, adapt or die gene. So it was like, uh, how am I going to do that? They've proven to be really popular. People book one of those. We have a chat. I talk about the kind of things that they can do and they're signing up. It's fantastic. Love it. And I'm going to put you on the spot uh -huh. just as I have with everyone else. Okay. Um, you've been a four networking member for, for coming up for 10 years in that case. What for someone who's in your shoes, who's just about to start their four networking journey, what what advice would would you give them with with the ten years of hindsight and experience that you've got? Ouch. Okay. Um, turn up. Be visible. And for the love of God, will you follow up? 
So, you know, don't don't turn up to one networking meeting, whether it's face to face or online a week and expect people to know who you are, know what you provide, know this, the problems you can solve and how you can help them. That is just not going to cut the mustard. You've got to turn up. You've got to be visible. So tell people where you're networking. You, you know, don't just go, oh, I'm going to, uh, you know, get your grow on next Friday, the day that you're there. Let people know where you're going to be so they can make the decision about whether or not they want to come and network with you online. But more than anything, you know, I'm about to quote you, you know, every big opportunity starts with a small conversation. Um, somebody I know very well <clears throat> said that. But so many people at the moment are online networking. You get to the end of the meeting and they just disappear and you never hear from them ever again. Following up now, if you're brand new to full networking, is almost more important than it was face-to-face, -face, and so many people are not doing it, they would be my three top tips. Turn up, be visible, and for the love of all things holy, follow up. I, I attended a, a meeting yesterday, um, which I spoke at, and very flatteringly, I had 24 LinkedIn messages by, by the time I, 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 I finished. Um, and I've replied to each one of those individually and it probably, you know, that, that in itself took me 25 minutes, half an hour, just replying to, to those LinkedIn messages. And I haven't made a single sale out of any of that, but I wouldn't expect to just keeping in touch with people. Those people had spent time sending me a message and I thought, how, how flattering is that? Of course, I'll follow up. Of course, I'll, I'll reply to all of those. I think people for, forget that sometimes that as soon as any of us walk out, there's other stuff on our minds and, and actually reminding people that we existed because now there's 24 people from that meeting who, you know, if they get in touch with me in future, I'll be able to see that we've, we've had a chat in the past. I, I just think that that act, that action is, is lost on, on a lot of people. Absolutely. So before we, we wrap this up for the afternoon, someone coming into for networking where will they find you what for networking meetings do do you look after which ones do you do you tend to hang out at okay wow uh, now i've got to make sure i don't miss anybody out um you so <laughs> because <laughs> there's a few uh, so every week i have the great privilege and joy uh, no every two weeks sorry because they're all now fortnightly uh, of working with the following groups i've got um Trific tuesday which is hosted by the wonderful rachel haith and supported by amanda ralston top tips for you and your business every two weeks love that meeting uh, also got uh, mel's place our evening meeting 6 p.m it's a lovely way to relax into the evening it's all about you know people's storytelling you know learning from basically having a good old yarn at the bar um i've got get your grow on uh, on a friday which is aimed towards people who are either totally hopeless gardeners or pretty keen gardeners tips not just for your garden but also to grow your business um, then i have saddle up which is fortnightly on a monday that's aimed at people who have a connection with the equine industry i gave a foresight for the first time at their launch meeting called skunk snakes and blazing saddles and that was a trip down memory lane uh, and I've then also got coming up on the alternative Monday crafters corner if you make it then come and join us for the launch of that on the 27th of July for all things people are interested in craft if you knit it crochet it sew it stitch it pot it whatever come and join us for that one business over breakfast is launching on the 30th of July with the lovely Ellie Gray coming back into a team role I'm really excited about that um, does exactly what it says on the tin great business development tips over breakfast that's an 8 30 in the morning meeting and then I mentioned it before because I'm really quite excited get your nosh on launches on the 31st of July a 4m meeting like you will have never seen before alternating wait for it live cooking demos one week with tips and tricks and techniques based on a theme the week after. And the first one is live from Wyatt Towers. How excited am I? I mean, all of that sounds... <laughs> oh, tires on Tuesday. I did. Tires. There you go. <laughs> tires on Tuesday, the group for petrol heads, which was yesterday. I think that's everything. <laughs> what excited me most about that, you mentioned Rachel and Amanda and yeah. Mel yeah. and Ellie. Yeah. And so I'm sat here thinking, I know all of these people and I'm based here in Oxfordshire and they're all based up there in and around yeah. Lincolnshire. And yet I know them and I know a little bit about their business and I know a little bit about them as people. And, and actually being on the four networking team, therefore, has given them that bit more Absolutely. profile, that bit more recognition around the country than if they had just existed as, as individual yeah. businesses. And, and actually, um, 
Mel, of course, as as an organisation, we we use Mel's services to to reward Absolutely. people. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's it's really exciting and thrilling for me to to hear people and think, yeah, I know, I know Rachel, I know Amanda, I've I've been in in meetings with them and I know exactly what they do, and so I've got an idea of who they are and specifically who they might want referred to them if, if it ever pops up in conversation with me and that's that's something which again we'd have we'd have never achieved without 4 um, exactly it's fantastic you know and all the team you know including kitty who gc's for mel and also for a couple of the you know the specialist groups and it, you know katie and nikki on the on the saddle up team it's lovely to work with people who've got a passion claire elvin who works with me on tires on tuesday and those niche groups you know they just create such a lovely environment at the beginning of the meeting because everybody's got a shared passion everybody's just you know sitting there yesterday as i say tires on tuesday we have the normal you know five ten minute petrol head banter waffle uh you know before we go into the meeting you know i get teased every time because much as i would love to be driving a supercar i don't i drive a you know say at lay on estate uh, but as you know our supercar sits in the garage and only drives it um so you know it's i just love it i love all that stuff and having those team members around as well who are so keen and ready to go i i want to do another one you know help uh, you know if you're going to open another group i want to be part of it it's fantastic it's a great team if if we let this happen you and i would talk for hours which i would enjoy doing um but for the sake of our watchers our listeners i've decided to keep these to about 20 25 minutes each um so thank you for that sheena it's always a pleasure to talk to you thank you um for everything that you do on the four networking team as well um and i'm sure i'm very sure you and i will speak very soon i hope so let's have one of our quick chats <laughs> we'll do it <laughs>